special inside roller jam. Uh -oh. For the women of roller jam, slaps in the face and slips on the track are all part of the game. Whenever we go out there, I mean, we just go out there scratching, fighting, kicking, clawing, anything that we have to do. Oh, man! But despite the bumps and bruises, these hard-charging chicks still look sexy on skates. Our girls basically are allowed to, like, wear practically nothing, um, but they're great athletes. I mean, yes, we do show a lot of uh, TNA, they say, but they also got to be able to perform. While today's competitors may show a little more leg, the women of roller derby have always captivated audiences with their unladylike behavior on the track. At the uh, time that roller derby started, and this was all, almost immediately an innate criticism, was how can you let women compete on the same basis as men? Since roller derby began in 1935, women have competed in the game as equals to men. From its earliest years, crowds flocked to see these sexy skaters. But it would be decades before women were accepted as competitors in a professional sport, let alone one as violent as roller derby. Back in the 30s and 40s, women weren't supposed to act like this. It was considered unladylike, ungracious. Jerry Seltzer, son of roller derby creator Leo Seltzer, believes that female competitors have always been just as talented as their male counterparts. In many years, uh, uh, my father resented the fact that nobody would take the game seriously because of the fact that women were competing within it. And of course, afterwards that became a huge advantage because people would say, you know, they want to come to see the women knock each other around. To see women cutting loose and yelling and screaming and fighting was an attraction in and of itself. They used to say that the women brought them in and the men played the game. And in some respects that was true. While women have always competed in roller derby, it wasn't until the early 60s that the sport had its first female star. Joni Weston, a gifted athlete with long strawberry blonde hair, began competing at age 18. She gained national recognition for her sex appeal and athleticism. Joni eventually became roller derby personified for a lot of people. People didn't maybe know the, the ins and outs of the game, but she became probably the best known female athlete. At 5'10", Joni towered over her rivals. Known for her quick feed and hard punches, the blonde bomber took the game by storm. Joni Weston was is the, the top of the line female skater of all time. She was she's a legend. She was a powerhouse blocker, but she could jam. She could do almost everything a guy could do on the track, and that transcended to the girls' field. I skated with her. I coached her. Uh, I had my grievances over there. But she was good for the role of Derby, very good. The Derby not only gave Weston an athletic outlet, but also brought her true love with fellow skater Nick Scopus. Tony and I went together for about 15 years before we uh, actually got married. Got married around in 1982. We were pretty happy together. I was into hot rods, she was into dogs. She was a very, very talented person, a very strong skater. Skated against men uh, and held her own pretty well, unless it was a bigger guy. And, I mean, even I couldn't hold my own against a bigger guy. After the derby ended in the early 70s, Joni opened a training school for skaters. She hoped to attract a new generation to the sports she loved. Joni herself gave an awful lot of time and effort uh, uh, to get the game going, and she would do countless interviews and so forth to try and uh, see if there could be some interest out there. Although Joni died in May of 1996, her legacy lives on in the skaters of today. I think Joni Weston is, is alive in every single one of the female skaters out there. I think that this was her dream, and I, and I feel that you know she's with us, and she's blessed us with this sport coming back. While Weston was by far the most beloved skater of all time, her arch rival, Ann Calvello, inspired a different emotion. Ann Calvello, uh, as a skater, was very unique to us because uh, Ann always wanted people to hate her. I would never try to hurt anybody intentionally or anything, but I just wanted to win, and if I didn't, though, well, most of the time I did because... <laughs> I'm such a competitor, even to this day. And there we have Ann Calvello moving out the fiery Ann from San Francisco. Ann started skating in 1948 and quickly gained a reputation as the toughest woman on the track. She broke all the rules, getting a rise out of her fellow skaters and her fans. Ann is just the prototypical villainous 
uh, in a role that she created. Oh, there's bad blood here. Calvello's bad girl attitude was often overshadowed by her bizarre sense of style. For St. Patrick's Day one year, she uh, dyed her hair green. There was too many natural blondes around with the suntan. I just did my hair green. And this happened to be on uh, when the Derby was in color on television, and the fans wrote in and, and talked to her, and they said, do it again, do it again. I used to put car paint on my nails because you couldn't buy these nail polishes. And I used to put the, for the lipstick and stuff would be eye makeup on my lips, you know, because I would skate with green lipstick, blue and all that, but it'd be stuff in your eyes. Now you can get it everywhere. Today, at age 70, Anne continues to surprise people. This former demon of the derby holds down two jobs, working in a supermarket and collecting tickets for the 49ers. And occasionally she can still be seen circling the track. I really haven't changed that much. You know, I have a few wrinkles, but not much for being in the sun 70 years. <laughs> Coming up, meet the diehard fans who fill the stands. Roller Jam and the girls, the Pepper the Jam is there. But first, Roller Jam smacks down pro wrestling. They have a soft mat and a mat outside the track. We're in a hard surface and concrete.